Hello, welcome to another Cinematic Tools tutorial video. 2016 brought some subtle changes to Battlefield 4 Cinematic Tools, so we'll cover those as well as taking a look at Star Wars Battlefront and Need for Speed 2016 tools, just to get you started. Links to the relevant download locations are in the description below. All these tools are of course created and distributed completely free of charge by Hattiwati and his team. So as always, if you find you're making good use of the tools, please, please consider donating through his website, a link to which I will also provide in the description. I will also emphasize before we get going that the cinematic tools are essentially a hack and as such should only be used on private Battlefield 4 servers with Punkbuster and Fairfight disabled and where Battlefront and Need for Speed are concerned, used at the player's own discretion. To date, I have used them freely in multiplayer, but consider this as fair warning. Right, that's the admin and disclaimers out of the way, let's take a look at the tools themselves. Starting right from the download, the file you should receive should look something like this. The first thing to do once you've saved the folder to your chosen location is to take a look at the README information. I don't know who Birdo is, I've never heard of him. This will give you some tips for general usage and the all-important keyboard shortcuts. At the time of recording this, there is no README file for the relatively new Need for Speed tool download, so here is a list of shortcuts for that tool set. Pause the video if you need to, and I'll probably uh, include them in the description as well. It's very important that you run your game as admin. If you don't, you should see a warning in the console window, and whilst the tools will essentially be functional on a basic level, for more complex tasks, including changes to environmental settings, this will make life much more difficult. Once you're in your chosen game, spawn in as required, and run the tools executable. It's also important that you see two windows appear here, one for the tool controls and the other is the console window that will let you know if the tools have successfully injected and also feed back a list of all commands that you're making within the tools themselves. If you don't see the console window, it's quite possible that you will have to update your Visual C++ redistributable package. Check the description for a link. Given that shortcuts are available for you to use if you wish, I'll refer only to clicking relevant tool window boxes for the purpose of this tutorial. Common across all three sets of tools then, you will now see the control window on the camera page. One of the changes to the BF Cinematic Tools is that the controls here are no longer locked whilst the free camera is disabled, so as with Battlefront and Need for Speed, you can freeze time from the standard in-game point of view. To enable the free camera, click Enable on this page, and then tick the Disable Input box, and for Battlefield, also tick the Free Camera box. Depending on what control method you're using, with either gamepad or normal movement keys, you should now be able to freely roam around, completely detached from your in-game character or car. With Need for Speed, you may need to use the number pad keys on your keyboard if you don't have a controller. Movement of this free camera can be adjusted by changing the movement speed and speed of camera rotation figures in the relevant boxes. For Need for Speed, you will be able to change the field of view here as well, uh, but for Battlefield and Battlefront field of view, change the value on the Miscellaneous tab. While we're here, let's have a look at some other functions. Resolution Scale can help you make the game look more detailed by artificially multiplying the standard texture resolution by the figure in this box. Game time scale will allow you to run the game in slow motion, for example, but be aware that if you freeze time when you subsequently unfreeze, the game will return to the normal time scale, not the value in this box. In Need for Speed, you might also be interested in the Disable Damage tick box, which will enable you to run around the map without taking on any visual signs of car damage, regardless of how many things you crash into. For Battlefield, also note that the player and faction emblems can be disabled here, although you'll have to respawn to see that take effect, if you haven't done so already. This page on the Battlefront tools also give you access to disable AI in single player and co-op modes, rendering them virtually harmless. Of particular interest is of course the Disable UI box in Battlefront, with the Home key being the shortcut for Need for Speed and Page Up key for Battlefield titles. This will completely remove all HUD elements in one go. It's worth pointing out in Need for Speed particularly that you can lock the camera to the car by ticking this box on the camera page. If you then re-enable Game Input but disable camera controls with these boxes here, 
you'll be able to drive around as normal with the camera locked in that position. So that's basic camera functionality, but no screenshot or cinematic would be complete without a little bit of depth of field. The cinematic tools are extremely powerful and allow certain changes to be made to the in-game environment. Currently, the Battlefield tools are the most comprehensive in this regard, and I've produced other tutorials to cover certain aspects of that, but depth of field is particularly useful for adding some realism to your content and works the same across all three games. Select the Visual Environments or Visuals tab and click on Controls. Now click Get Values and the tools will now populate those values in all the relevant settings, including depth of field, to the current in-game environment. Now tick the Depth of Field box to allow you to override the game settings and go to the Depth of Field tab. Start by clicking Enable and the most commonly used values for quickest results are Focus Distance, set as required, Blur Factor set to 1 or less than 1, Max Blur is generally set to 1 or less than 1, Far Start can be set to 0 or the same value as your Focus Distance and Far End can be set to something like 10 for close objects and anything up to a thousand for more landscape shots. You should of course experiment with these settings to get results that look natural for your particular shot. And with that I think we just about wrap things up for a basic cinematic tools tutorial. Thank you for watching and I'll check back every now and then here for questions in the comments section below and you can also follow me on Twitter in the link in the description. Bye for now.